Nobody can have mass over there but the Pope and the Cardinals that he give permission. You see that canopy right up? It's a bronze canopy. <laughs> see, when Solomon built the temple, he put a canopy <laughs> that the ark could always be under. There's some historians that believe that just like when the high altar was at St. John and the ark was in that altar where the Pope gave mass, that under that altar in St. Peter is our ark of the covenant. And they claim that St. Peter's body is under that. And we're going to look at some little things like that. But other historians say, that the ark is under that. That they still have it. You say, Pastor, but wait. Don't they have a bunch of people that claim to have that ark? Like the Ethiopians and different people like that, yeah. They got a bunch of people that claim to have it. <laughs> but let me give you a little advice on how you can always tell what an ark is. First, sec Second Samuel chapter 6. Brian, remember David wanted to get the ark back to Jerusalem. He wanted to get it that bad. And he tried the first time and they did it wrong. They didn't do it with the sticks. Y'all saw the sticks that, and, and the relief that they had? You can't carry the ark no kind of way, man. Mess around, get yourself dealt with. Well, they put the ark in a cart, and the cart kind of kind of move, and, and Uzzah put his hand to the ark. Uh-uh-uh, don't you touch that. Smote him dead. David left the ark. He said, ah, he said, we ain't going to better bring it. <laughs> I don't want to lose no more people on the way. We got to figure something out. So David left the ark. And he left the ark at a man's house by the name of Obed-Edom. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel 6, 12, and it was told King David saying, the Lord had blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all, and all that pertained unto him. Why? Because of the ark of God. What you don't know about the ark is wherever the ark is, it's going to be blessed. Especially 
if God want the ark there. If the ark wants to be there, whoever has it is going to be blessed. Brent, show me them pictures of St. Peter again. We just going back. Wherever the ark is, going to be blessed. Show me the picture. <laughs> Wherever the ark is, <laughs> going to be blessed. Show me the picture, Brent. Wherever the ark is, going to be blessed. Wherever the ark is, it's going to be blessed. Especially if the Most High want the ark, where is it? It's going to be blessed. It's going to be blessed. Do you know how rich the Catholic Church is? And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertained to him. <laughs> Why, Minister Ant? Because of the ark. I remember driving my car one evening and thoughts was going through my mind. I was just so ready to just give up on everything, all of my dreams. I didn't have any words, just tears. I know some of you felt like that before. And then God spoke a word to me, and this is what he said. Standing here, I'm standing here. So I'm ready. I will. 
Thank you for tuning in to the Philadelphia Christian Church live stream service. And shalom to everyone watching from our School of the Hebrews YouTube channel live stream. This broadcast is also available on our Facebook page. We pray for the presence of God to be in your homes or wherever you are. Hey y'all, this is James. And I Ola. And it's time for the good, good news, news of, of the week. week. All right, so we got, what, you want to do birthdays or anniversaries? Let's go ahead and do the birthdays. All right, let's see what we got for the birthdays today. Uh, this week, come on. Like, looks like we got a happy 16th birthday on July 1st to Alyssa. Happy birthday, Alyssa. Love your mom. Yes. And also, we got a happy birthday to Angela Harrison. Go ahead, Angela. Uh, happy birthday on July 3rd from your husband, Sergio. Happy birthday, Angela. And also, we have some anniversaries. There's the 20th anniversary of Bomani and Ooh, Christina Henry. 20 years. 20 years. Wow. Christina says that... I pray God continues to bless our marriage. She says 2020 has been a rough year, wow. but the love we share makes whatever comes our way easy to endure. Thank you, love. That's awesome. She said to this is to Bomani that she loves you. That's awesome. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Also, we have Lacia Hall, who would like to give her husband Calvin Hall a happy anniversary. That was on July 1st. Yeah. So congratulations to the Hall family all the way Come on. in Mesquite, Texas. Yeah. Wow. Go ahead, it's Texas. It's they Texas. do it big in Texas. In the house. Come on now. Hmm. So we got a praise report uh, this week, babe. Right? Yes. Um, we got a praise report from, from the Pitts family. He okay. says that the husband says uh, he had lost his job on April 10th due to the COVID-19 shutting down the whole world. Right, right. Several millions have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. We've all seen that on the news. Right. In the face of all this, he said, Yah has a blessing for his people in the middle of this storm. Come on. He says about a week ago, uh, he was hired for a job making a good amount more than he previously was. Favor. And then not only that, he says his former CFO offered him a job across the country. So he had options. That's how God do that. Also, he says his wife Alicia had taken a large pay cut due to the COVID-19. Uh, and because her employer began struggling, right. her workload was increased and she wasn't happy. Come on. But for the second time in her career, she was recruited by a headhunter on LinkedIn and she just earned a big pay increase in her new role too. So, wow. Hebrew hallelujah. Yes, indeed. To the Open Pitts heaven That's over it. the Pitts family. All right, guys. So we've got a little PMG news. Okay, Hallelujah. Okay, okay. Come on. There is a new release coming up. Who is it? This is some great music for the movement. Hey. And there's more to come, guys. But mark your calendars for July 17th for the release of J Malvo. Hallelujah. Eight song EP come back to life. Yes, indeed, y'all. J Malvo is on the move with PMG Music for the movement. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Y'all look. Do not forget, you guys. They had a whole bunch of EPs that just came out recently with PMG. Leah Simone's EP Heaven on Earth. Yes. Go get that. Yes. Passion also had an EP Rejoice with Me. Go cop that. A Voices, remember, A Voices EP as well, Reflections. Mm -hmm. And remember, Kingdom Jews single, she had Thinking About You. All these songs are available on digital media outlets on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon MP3. You ain't got no excuse but to go and get, get it. it because PMG is making music for, for the, the movement. movement. And as, as we always say, if you have any good news, birthdays, anniversaries, new businesses, or even a testimony, send it to phillyoffice1 at yahoo.com to be featured on the good news of the week. We must receive it by 3 p.m. on Thursdays to be featured on Sundays and Tuesdays announcements. Church members and visitors are encouraged to tune in via live stream and share the link with your family, friends, and even co-workers as we continue to worship God in these adverse times. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, Philadelphia Christian Academy, PCA, is now offering online learning for students in K-3 through the 8th grade for the upcoming fall semester. It has been decided to go online because we care about the health and safety of our students, staff, and extended family members. For more information, please email us at pcalafayette at gmail.com or visit pcalafayette.com. Current and new Hebrew businesses are encouraged to sign up to the Key of David business directory by going to www.kofdavid.org. Click on the register button and then click on sign up now and fill out the form. 
please give 72 hours for your listing to be published to the website. Let's support one another with a Hebrew hallelujah. We also encourage you to download the Philly app to receive push notifications with updates and watch previous sermons, Hebrew nuggets, and past conferences. The app is available on both Android and Apple devices. Go to your app store and search for PCC Lafayette or click on the download app button via the church's website. Don't forget we have various ways of giving. You can text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to the phone number 337-214-0707. That's 337-214-0707. We have online giving by opening another tab on your browser and visiting our website at philadelphiacc.org and then click on the giving tab. You can also give via our app. To those watching live from YouTube, remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the bell to be notified of live sermon messages and new videos. Saints of God, we are glad you are tuning in with us today from all four corners of the world. Right now, let's stand to our feet right from the living room. Judah is worship time. And we are ready to bear your praises on this morning, God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your safety and protection as we slept, Lord God. Father, we thank you for waking us up on this morning, Lord God. We thank you that we're in our right minds on this morning, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for everything that you've done, that you're doing, that you're about to do. And we thank you for who you are, Lord God. For truly, you are a mighty God. And Father, it is in this name, Jesus, that we thank you and we praise you. Amen. 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 Go ahead and like. Go ahead and love. Go ahead and share this video. Tag somebody. Tell somebody that it's worship time. Amen. Tell somebody it's worship time. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? How many know that the Lord is worthy? How many know that the Lord is worthy? We're going to have some fun on this morning, all right? Y'all ready to stand for the land?
Put some hearts on the screen. Hallelujah, God, you're so awesome, God. You're so marvelous in all your ways. Great and just and true is all your ways. God, we just thank you for being so good. But not only good, you have been great. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we just want to thank you, Lord God, that now we're in a season, Lord God, where we're reaping, Lord God, and we're taking back everything that the devil stole, God. And we're going to rejoice today. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, if you know this song, sing it with us. Faithful, 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 faithful is our God. Say faithful, 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 faithful is our God. 
You are showing us things that we have never seen. We are walking into an open door. We just want to ask that you continue to fill us up and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. We want more of you. We 
Thank you, Lord.
sacrifice of praise we want all of you and none of us your glory God fill us up God like a refill God we need a refill today we can't live this life without you we can't make this next move without you we rely upon your spirit God to lead us and direct us. Be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. God, we need an overflow today. We don't want just to be filled to the rim. We want more. Speak to us. Give us revelation, God. Give us provision, God. Give us vision, God. This is what it means when we say fill us up, God. Not for our selfish desire, God, so that people will see your glory through us. So that people will see how great and how marvelous you are on this earth. So that we may display your love, God. Fill us up with your love. So the love within us overflow. Fill us up with patience, God. In a world that is people doing all kind of things, Lord God. Let them see your patience through us, God. Fill us up with joy, Lord God. A joy that the world cannot give us, God. An unspeakable joy, God. That's what it means when we want more of you, God. We want to look like you. We want to smell like you. We want to talk like you. We want to walk like you. We want to look more like you, Jesus. So that when they see us, Lord God, they see a picture of the cross. Fill us up, God. This is our cry as a people. This is our cry. This is our cry. God, we thank you so much for being a God that sees the needs of your people. We give you praise, God. You know exactly what we need, and you know when we need it, God. And, and Father, this morning, God, with all of the celebrations going on, with independence that don't really apply to us, we need a filling, Father God. We need a refreshing, Father God. We need a reinvigoration, Father God. We, we need a renewal, Father God. Uh, we need you to come down and say you hadn't forgot about us and, 
that you're still with us, Lord God, that though America might not have given us our freedom, he who the Son has set free is free indeed. So we thank you, God, for the freedom of heaven. We give you praise for the freedom of Calvary, God. We, we lift your name on high, Daddy, and we thank you. We thank you for the freedom, God. And so we just pray right now from the bottom of our hearts, King, that you touch your people wherever they are, that you'd anoint them wherever they are, that you would bless them wherever they are right now, God, as your people lift up holy hands unto you, God. Uh, we pray that you'd see and hear from heaven and, and that you'd heal our land, Lord God. We pray for the restoration of our people, the, the unity of our people. We pray for the awakening of our people, God, and we won't stop praying, Father God. We won't stop fasting for it, O oh King, and we know, God, that you're going to fill us up, O oh King, so permeate our souls right now, O oh breath of God. Breathe upon the valley of the dry bones and, and raise us up a mighty, mighty Hebrew army, God. Uh, fill us up <laughs> till we overflow. <laughs> We want to run over, Daddy. We, we want to run over, God. We want to run over. Come on, God. Just, just, just fill us up. Fill me up. Hey, God. Till we overflow, Daddy. I, I want to run over. Want to run over. Come on, somebody want to do it up in here. Somebody. Come on, say that with our worship team. Come on, fill me up. Fill me up. Woo. Come on, tell them. I want to run, got to run, come on, fill me up, come on somebody, hey, till I overflow, overflow is what I'm after, I got to run, hey, come on, fill me, that's what the church needs right now, that's what the Hebrews need right now, come on, come on, Ooh. That's what the world needs. Feel me, feel me. We're looking for overflow. Hey, hey, come on, come on. Feel me, feel me. Feel me up, feel me up. Come on, Yeshua. about your people. Pour down on us right now. Pour down, God. Whew. That's good. Come on, God. Whew. Pour it down. Hey. Pour, pour. That's what we need right now, Daddy. Your spirit. Ooh. Come on, come on. Pour it up, pour it up. Pour it up, pour it up. Pour it up, pour it up. Oh, 
That's good. That's good. Come on. Right now, we pray according to your promise, God, that when we ask for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that you're not keeping back for us, God. So we pray right now that you pour out your power, your spirit, your anointing, your favor, your wisdom right now. Hallelujah. In the form of the Holy Ghost, the paraclete. Hallelujah. The helper. Hey, God, the guide, the teacher. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come on down and fill us up at this altar and fill up your people at the altars of their homes right now and fill them up God that after this worship service they'll never be the same again that they'll have more power more boldness more wisdom and skill and understanding so now even now as we worship pour it out pour it out pour it out pour it out on our husbands and our wives and pour it out on our children and Pour him out on our neighborhoods, our communities, our businesses. Uh, anoint, Lord God, and pour it out like the day of Pentecost, Lord. Pour, 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 pour. Come on, Abba. Pour him out, pour him out, pour him out, pour him out on your people. You said in the last days, that you pour out your spirit, God, on all flesh. That our sons and daughters would prophesy, King. That our old men would dream dreams and our young men would see vision, Daddy. So bless us in these last days by pouring out your Holy Ghost upon us. And Father, we promise when it's all said and done, when we are restored, awakened, God, and we are prospering, we promise that we're going to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We thank you for it even now. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God some glory wherever you are. Come on, give him some glory. Come on, give him some glory. Believe, believe, believe. Come on, that's good. Do your thing, do your thing. Hallelujah, I heard somebody. Come on, come on.
devils are fleeing right now. The enemy is in retreat right now. As you worship, as you praise, hey God, whatever was trying to come up against you, hey God, is fleeing several different ways, amen. Bible says when the enemy come in like a flood that the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Right now, as you worship, hallelujah, the Lord is setting ambushments against the enemy. Just like the days of Jehoshaphat, just like the days of Hezekiah, like the days of David. Come on, we not done yet. Come on, tell the devil, tell the enemy, tell the pain in your body. It may look like, it may look like, hey. It may look like I'm Hey, it may look like. praise right now God we give you praise God some things just don't look right in America for our people <laughs> and some people rejoice in God even while we suffering king and but they don't see what we see oh daddy they don't know what we know daddy it might look to them like we surrounded but we are surrounded by you oh king so now daddy bless us as we enter in this next phase of worship, God, as we move towards getting to your word, I pray you fill me up with your Holy Ghost and bless me, God, with a word in due season for your people, oh, Yah, who is sufficient for these things. No one, but we know if you be with us, hallelujah, that nobody can stand against us. And so bless us now. Save some, anoint all, and awaken your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to move into our next phase of worship even now. Hallelujah. And for those that's new to Philadelphia Christian Church, amen, where we are the church of the Hebrews, amen, we want to welcome you in, A hey God. Even while we're doing our thing, go ahead and send a shout out where you're tuning in from, amen. There's so many from across our state and across the nation for that matter who tune in on Sundays amen and especially during these perilous times amen where we can't gather physically but we can still gather on one accord spiritually amen and so go ahead and type it in and and tell the hallelujah the Philly fam the the community online where you're from it's a great encouragement to us and our team hallelujah not only that, saints, we're going to move into our giving time, amen, where we worship God in song, amen, but now we want to worship him in our substance, amen. It's one thing to tell God how much you love him, but it's another thing to show him, amen. And the Bible says where your heart is, there will your treasure be also, amen. And so we're going to give to the most high God who done gave us food to eat and clothes to put on our back, amen. And there's a plethora of different ways in which you can give. You can give, hallelujah, by texting 214-0707. You can go to philadelphia.org, cc.org and give. You can give on extm, agod.org. We also have a church app. You can go to the church app and give, agod. That makes it quite convenient. And one of the ways that I've been seeing y'all exercise is giving through the cash app at cash tag PCCLA. Go ahead and give that way, a God, and, and, and we know that our God's going to bless you. We know he's going to bless you, amen, because he's never failed us yet. His promises are yes and amen. And old folk you could, used to say you never can outgive God, amen. And so even this morning, let the Most High put on your heart his work to you, amen. 
Hallelujah. I feel you. Amen. Tuning in even already. I see you. Hey, God, big sister. I see you. Hey, God, Tara, Tara Tebow. Amen. We praise God for you. Ty Hooper. Hey, God, there's so many that's given, but, but give to the Most High, and he's going to reward you. Amen. For blessing his people in these last days. And so the worship team is going to bless us with something that we can jam to, that we can praise to, because our God loves a what? A cheerful giver. Amen. So let's give to the Most High and let's give with a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good already. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh. Happy birthday, Maureen. That was yesterday. Happy birthday.
so much Lord God that we can have fun in worship we can have fun in praise God and we can give you what you deserve Lord God we thank you for the anointing that's up here and we do pray in the mighty name of Yahshua Hamashiach that you would bless Lord God your people who have given King we pray that you would see them same way Lord God that you saw hallelujah uh, all those who had given from the widow's might Lord God to a God uh, the centurion who whose giving came up for a memorial before you, God. Now, King, see your people, O oh Daddy, and bless your people. We pray you bless them a hundredfold, God, for supporting not only the church, but supporting the church of the Hebrews, where you are in these last days and where you're moving in these final hours. So give them a hundredfold. Restore to us the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. Do it even now. In our lifetime, before our eyes, in Yahshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give y'all some glory if you believe it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, saints. If you can, just open your Bibles up to Matthew 10 and verse 16. Matthew 10, 16. Good job, worship team. Good job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Appreciate y'all, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can remember a time, amen, where, hallelujah, we, were, we didn't have no music, a God, no worship, no nothing. Hallelujah. Church, church, church would begin. I'd just get up, and maybe every now and then I'd clap a little something, but we just began, Carlos Marcus, and we began just with the word, amen, and, 
And now that we have worship and the word, is, is such a blessing, amen. So we give God glory for it. We're definitely so grateful for it, amen. And, and hallelujah, I, I just believe that the best is yet to come for the church of the Hebrews, amen. That, that we're going, hallelujah, fully move into everything, amen, that's been predestined for us, amen. And so I'm believing that, and I can't wait to see it, amen. Hallelujah, appreciate y'all. And so we're going to take our Bibles and turn to Matthew 10. In verse 16, hallelujah. And I'm going to read a little bit, amen. And, and I can't say it's going to be my text, amen, but it's going to be kind of like the spirit from where I'm coming from, hallelujah, because I'm going to be doing a little bit of historical study with us uh, this morning, a eh, God, but it is Bible because it's our history and we are the people, amen. And so we're going to be talking about that a little bit and going in, a eh, God, and so if ever there was a message you wanted your friends and family to tune into, especially those that might not really believe that we are them people and you've tried your best to kind of talk to them about it, amen, this is the message right here, amen, because I'm going to deal with probably the most important uh, piece of the puzzle, a eh, God, in regards to us being the Hebrews. And so we've covered that whole section where we talked about the fall of Jerusalem, and that's a lot of evidence in that as well. But this morning, I'm going to talk about a segment in history that we would call the diaspora. Amen. And so I'm going to talk about the diaspora to Negro land this morning. And so it's important. So if you got like sisters and brothers, if you got like friends and family, mamas and daddies, amen, this is the one. This is the one that, that you want them to tune into because we'll be covering the fundamentals, the basics, amen, throwing in a little bit new information, new evidence for those, amen, to kind of keep you listening and keep you posted. But this is for your friends and your family. So even now, just text them, call them, hallelujah, uh, 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 DM them, amen, just whatever you got to do, a hey God, but tell them they can't miss this right here, amen, because I'm believing that this is the message of our generation, that this is, a hey God, the word for our time, amen, and it's not just that we the Hebrews, but we're the, we're the Hebrews with a new covenant understanding of grace and the cross of Calvary, and that's a whole new thing, that's a whole nother realm, amen, and that's where we are right now, and so I'm going to read from Matthew 6, 10, 16, and we'll kind of get going. And I know I normally cover some stuff that's in the news, amen, but ain't too much going on. Uh, but Kanye West is running for president, I heard, amen, hallelujah. And so um, I don't know, amen, I'm not going to speak any, either good or bad about it. Uh, he's my brother in, 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 uh, in so many ways, and so I'm just going to keep it like that. Uh, it could be a very, very uh, big problem, a eh God, if it gains serious momentum because uh, it could split uh, the Hebrew vote, which would give the incumbent president, Donald Trump, uh, carte blanche to uh, a, a second term. And so we, we really got to be careful with that. But I'm not going to say anything good or bad about it, a eh God. I don't know who's leading him to do it. Hopefully it's the most high. But, um, yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, in the news this week. Amen? So let's look at Matthew 10 and verse 16. And we're just going to read a little bit. Hey, God. The Bible says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you to the councils, and they will scourge you in the synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. But when, uh, but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. 
For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Let me just read 23 again. It says, but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. 24, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Father, we thank you for your word. Bless us as we go over these things, God, these mysteries that's been hidden for ages, O King. We know, Lord God, the enemy has tried so hard to stop us from knowing who we are because until we know who we are, your people are going to perish for a lack of knowledge. Now, Daddy, take this message and carry it to the four corners of the earth. Put it upon the winds of eagles and speak to the bones, God, no matter where they lay. Prophesy unto them, O King. Even use my mouth that the bones may raise up and be united a mighty army and that the breath, the ruah of your spirit might pour unto the armies of Israel. Bless us, O King, even now, and fill us all up. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I picked this text primarily because um, of that verse 23 where Yahshua tells his disciples, he says, listen, if they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. And that's pretty much what the Hebrews did during the diaspora. They took the, the word of Yahshua, a God, and they put it in operation. And we're going to see, amen, a constant uh, 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 pushing of the Hebrews from Israel all the way throughout Africa, even to this very place where we are now, America. And so we're going to talk about that diaspora a little bit today. And um, if you remember last time, we talked about the fall of Jerusalem. We talked about Titus and Vespasian, uh, them uh, going back to Rome and having the different parades. Uh, we saw them take the furnishings of the temple with them. And I showed you a pic of the Arch of Titus and, and how it was engraven with the parade, a God, as though it were, <coughs> that Titus was given uh, when he returned. Uh, if you can look at the next slide, amen, you'll see it there. There's some who say that uh, Titus... And the Romans took even the ark, uh, which had the laws of our God in them. But, a hey God, we know for sure that they took the menorah along with the showbread table. Amen. And so we saw the furnishings of the temple go to Rome. Hey God. Um, we're going to continue along with our history of Rome, Edom and the Hebrews. And, and we'll be talking about the diaspora taking a little trip to Negro land. And before we get there, we have to handle a couple of housekeeping details, a couple of things, so that your history, our history, your knowledge of our history can be complete. And so I'm going to get to my little first segment right here. Uh, I want to call it Masada. Somebody say it with me, Masada. All right. Now, Masada is a place, amen, and I have a pic of it up there. Uh, even right now, you can see it behind uh, the word. Masada was a place. It was a fortress uh, built in the desert by the Hebrews. And in 73 AD, right after the fall of 70, right after Jerusalem uh, was conquered, uh, a group of rebels and revolutionaries didn't want to give up to the Romans. So they retreated to Masada, all right? And when they treated to, the, uh, to Masada... About a thousand of them were there. They were held up in the mountain fortress, refusing to surrender to the Romans. They were under the leadership of a Hebrew by the name of Eleazar. And the Romans tried to get them to surrender, but they didn't. And so the Romans laid siege to the fortress of Masada, blocking all food and everything else from coming in. <clears throat> the food got scarce. <clears throat> the revolutionaries, instead of surrendering, a God, the Hebrews being under judgment, 
not being able to make good decisions of wisdom and skill. They should have surrendered, but they didn't surrender. Uh, they, wind, they wound up uh, all committing suicide, about a thousand of them. They pull lots, according to Josephus, and you'll see it in his book. Bear texted me, told me he got his book. Bear, that's going to be on page 768 in chapter 9, where it talks about Eleazar, his speech, and, and what he does, amen, uh, to convince his men to go ahead and commit suicide. Uh, each man kills his own family, and then uh, they pull lots, and 10 men were given the responsibility of, of killing the rest of the 1,000, and then they pull lots again, and one was given the responsibility of being executioner, and he destroyed the nine, and then he wound up killing himself. And so that was just a, a sign of the judgment of God upon our people, not really being able to win uh, or, or being successful or being victorious in anything. And so that was uh, Masada. And after this time of 73 AD, surprisingly enough, our people began, after, after Romans chased us out in 70, in 73, our people began to slowly sneak back into Israel, sneak back into Jerusalem, all right? Um, at this time, when you read Josephus, especially like his appendix part in the back, um, he's actually writing from Jerusalem, from Judea, rather. Uh, uh, he's given some land by the Roman government, Amen. Vaspian, uh, Titus, and their son, uh, Domitian, they give Josephus land and they give him wealth and they make his, his living tax free. So he goes back to that land that they give him, which is in Judea. All right. And, and multitudes of Hebrews began to come back to Judea. This is very important. All right. They began to come on back to, to Judea. All right. In Josephus' book, Amen, the editor and the translator, uh, tells us that Josephus actually accepts Christ at this time, becomes a believer, all right? Remember, he was all about the law when he wrote this and all about his people uh, with the old covenant, all right? But he accepts Yahshua HaMashiach, all right? And it's church history that our Josephus becomes a bishop over Jerusalem, okay? Uh, the first bishop being James, the brother of Yahshua himself, all right, coming on down 15 bishops later, you got your boy Josephus, known as Joseph in the ancient list of the bishops of Jerusalem. All right, becomes a believer, becomes a leader of the church. All right, and that's according to uh, Eusebius, amen, one of the Christian forefathers. Okay, and so that's what happens during the time of, of Masada. And the Hebrews are coming back, deacon. They're coming back to Israel, and then something else happens. A man by the name of Simon Bar Kokba stands up, all right, which is my second little point that I need to clear up with you just to kind of let you know, just some housekeeping stuff. Uh, he reigned from 132 to 135, all right, and the people of Jerusalem thought that this man was the Messiah. Not Josephus, I'm talking about the other people, <laughs> all right? They thought that he was the Messiah, all right? And in Matthew 24 and 23, look what the Bible says, Matthew 24 and 23. In the last days, Jesus is talking about, he says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, they say, Believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive who? The very elect. Behold, I have told you before. And then in verse 26, watch this. Wherefore, Jesus tells his disciples, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert. Jesus says, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For whose, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Jesus said, don't be deceived by no false messiahs. Don't be deceived by people claiming to be the Christ. 
And that's the problem with being stuck in the old covenant and being stuck in the law. You're still looking for Messiah. You're still putting Messiah labels on mere men who are sinful and fallen and ain't going to be able to do nothing for you but get you in a bind like these brothers did to, uh, uh, to the Hebrews back in that day. One Messiah, Yahshua is his name. And that same Messiah is going to descend from the heavens in the last days. And Yahshua tells us, if they tell you, go meet him in the desert, because that's what they was doing during the days right here. Let's go to this fortress. Let's go to this location. The Messiah is there. Jesus said, don't even believe him. Because the next time I show up, Yahshua say, it's going to be like lightning that flash across the sky. And though you were in the west and it flashed in the east, you'd be able to see it. Bible says in Revelation, when Yahshua show up, what does it say? How many eyes? Every eye shall see him. You see? That's Messiah. That's when Messiah show up. For the life of me, I can't figure out why men would want to be the Messiah anyway. You see? Is it enough to be a servant of the Messiah? Is it enough to be one of his ministers, one of his prophets? Is it enough to be one of his disciples, one of his apostles? Why would you ever fix your mouth to be Messiah? And it's because you don't know who Messiah is. Messiah is the God-man incarnate, the word of the Most High God, the word that became flesh, the word that was with God, and the word that was God. So when anyone say they're the Messiah, they're saying that they're God. When you put the label of Messiah on anybody, you saying that they're God. Messiah is the second person of the Godhead. In him, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells. Don't put that label on anybody. Call him a prophet. Call him an apostle. Call him a bishop. But don't you dare call anybody else the Messiah. Come on, give y'all some glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this man, Simon Bar Kokba, this leader, all right, uh, in 132, uh, the Hebrews thought he was the Messiah. And he went back to Jerusalem. And the emperor at Rome at this time, uh, a man by the name of, uh, let's see if I got his name down here. Brent, did I give you the list of them? Yes. Because uh, after Titus, Vesp Ve uh, Vespasian, uh, Titus, his son, uh, Domitian, his son, then you had two other emperors, and then, then this guy named uh, Hadrian. And, and Hadrian, he, he had an idea for Jerusalem because it was destroyed and then laid in, in heaps and stones everywhere. He said, I'm going to build another city over the ashes of Jerusalem, a city by the name of Alia Capitolina. That's what he wanted to build. Uh, and I'm going to show you a picture of what he wanted to do. Brent, if you can. He wanted to build right over Jerusalem. And he wanted to put a temple of Jupiter and a temple of, of Venus, Zeus and Aphrodite, right near the Temple Mount or in the city. And when the Hebrews heard that this emperor of Rome was trying to build over Jerusalem, the Hebrews all over the world went crazy. And this false messiah, Simon Bar Kokba, he seized upon that and put himself in Jerusalem and started a war. It was called the War of Freedom. It started off well. The Hebrews were successful for a time. A God, it gave the Romans tremendous losses, tremendous casualties. You know how the Hebrews do it. But ultimately, because it wasn't our season back then, Rome won. They were the ones that the glory of God went to, the favor of God went to. They won, all right? Uh, and 580,000 Hebrews was killed uh, under the hand of this false messiah, uh, Simon uh, Kokba. And, and 580,000 of them died, a God, trying to take back Jerusalem in, one, in 132. Now, what happens after that is where 
we want to get to because this is most important, deacon. After that, the Romans banned the Hebrews from coming back to Jerusalem. They say you can live anywhere you want to live, but y'all can't come back over here. Because the Romans knew every time the battle, they got, uh, 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 Brother Sam, every time the battle was over, where the Hebrews went, they'd sneak back home. All right? They'd come back home and start rebuilding. Okay? But it would cause trouble. So the Romans said, nah, y'all not allowed back over here. Stay away from Jerusalem. In fact, we don't want y'all near Israel at all. All right? And it was at this time, Hey, God, now the diaspora started about 70 A.D., 73. They was kind of trickling off, moving away from Israel. But when that ban happened, Marcus Marina, they had no choice. They couldn't go back home. So they began to move other places. Huh? And so it begins our third point, the diaspora. The diaspora. All right? The diaspora. Okay. And we're just focusing on that Matthew 10, 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. And all the historians agree that right after 73 AD, the fall of Jerusalem and Masada, the diaspora began, but really took its height around 132, 135. Pastor, what's a diaspora? A diaspora is a scattered population whose origin lies in a separate geographic locale. A scattered population, that means a people, all right, that's been scattered, all right? But their origin, they scattered now, but their origin is a separate locale, a separate place, all right? It's a people settled far from their ancestral homeland, okay? That's a diaspora. Meaning that you're not home no more. You're not where you grew up. You're not where your people is from. You're, you're in a strange land. You're in another place. How many people know that you, as a so-called African-American, you are in diaspora? Because you're far from home. You're not from your ancestral, you're not in your ancestral homeland. You're not in your origin your geographical location of origin, you're not there. America is not your home. You are in diaspora, all right? Now, this book right here, which I, I would recommend you get by Rudolph Windsor, is called From Babylon to Timbuktu. I'll put it up there for you. From Babylon to Timbuktu. This is one that you, you need to get your hands on. It got, it's got to be in your library. Our people perish for a lack of knowledge, and they say if you want to hide something from a Hebrew, you put it where? In a book. Well, those days are over. We read now, baby. You understand what I'm saying? So this book is an amazing compilation, and we'll cover some of the things he talked about today, but we can't get to all of it. An amazing compilation of the, the, the second exodus, us, or, or rather the, 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 the diaspora, rather, us leaving Israel. And so look what Windsor says. He says in the year 65 BC, he gives us the history, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. We know that when the two brothers was fighting, they couldn't get along. Pompey came in and took it over. But in 70 AD, General Vas Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with a great slaughter. That's the fall of Jerusalem. He's just giving us our history, and I'm reading it so you can know that I'm not lying about any of this. Hey, God, these two generals come through and slaughter our people. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period of Pompey to Julius, all right, he's, he's saying that, that, that it, it was, it's, it's a time of Pompey to, to Julius, which is, which is after uh, Titus them. He says, it has been estimated that over, watch this, one million Israelites fled into where? Into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of who? of black, Hebrew, or as you would call, Jewish slaves. All right? All right? What 
we need to know is that the Hebrews, the biological Hebrews, did not go into Europe, all right? Now, we see later that maybe the Edomites did, who had converted to Judaism. They went to people that looked like them. But us, the original Hebrews, the one with the bloodline like Yahshua, hair like wool, feet like brass, we went towards the people that looked like us. Anybody hear me up in here? The place where we always fled. The place when the Hebrews were in trouble, when, when, when they was after Mary and Joseph and, and they had to hide baby Jesus, where did they go? They went to Africa, man, because a brother can hide in Africa. A brother can't hide in Europe. You can't hide an Oreo in a glass of milk. Anybody hear me up in here? You got to hide in amongst the people that look like you. Brother trying to hide would do no good running up. Hey, God, in an all-white neighborhood, but you do good if you run through the project. They'll never catch you there. You see? So we have here, hey, God, the Hebrews fleeing to Africa. Now, I want to show you some maps that provide commentary on this. And for some of you that's listening, hey, God, it's your first time hearing that we the Hebrews and that we are the people of the book. And I'm going to show you, a God, through many proofs, not only literary and historical, but also geographical. Because when you pull up the maps, especially the maps of the 17 and 1800s, before they begin to hide, a God, our diaspora, you're going to find all the things that they missed that they didn't wipe out. Oh, you ain't heard me up in here. All right. And so this map shows the Jews, that's us, Hebrews of North Africa. You see, we went into North Africa, y'all. And this is before the Arab conquest. And we're going to probably talk about that a little bit next time. But what you need to know, before the Arabs came and conquered North Africa, the Hebrews came through and pretty much took over North Africa. They only took over North Africa after us because they saw us do it first. And now when you look at North Africa, whether you're looking at Libya or Egypt, it is primarily Arabic. All right? It's Arabic now because of the Muslim conquest. It wasn't like that before. Before that, it was the Hebrews. And before the Hebrews, it was uh, the sons and daughters of Ham, Agon, uh, 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 the Cushites, and the Hamites. It was the Africans. And so North Africa went from Africa, Hebrew, and then Arab conquest under what they call, they got the Islam or Muslim uprising. In our lifetime, we saw something called the Arab Spring, where the Muslims with ISIS and Al-Qaeda was trying to begin a new move. The move that they was trying to copy is the move right here where the Arabs swept through and took over most of the known world at that particular time. We may talk about that a little bit uh, next time, and we'll probably have to do it as we get deep into what Europe was doing while we was in Africa, you see, which is going to be so important. But Rudolph continues, he says, uh, the black Jews who migrated, watch this, uh, to the Sudan from the north, Converge with the Jews migrating from the eastern Sudan to the countries of the what? Niger River. There is much proof and still much more to be revealed, revealed by scholars that there existed prior to the slave trade and subsequent to the slave trade, many tribes, many colonies of the Jews, of the Hebrews, and many kingdoms of the Hebrews. Where? In West Africa. You see? You see? Brent, I got another pic. They got another map. And this shows us what happened when we came out of Israel. All right? We, we settled in northern Africa because we was used to that place. All right? We was already in Cyrene. What you mean by that? When you read your Bible, the God that helped carry the cross of Yahshua, Simon, from Cyrene, he was a Cyrenian, that's, that's northern Africa, that's, that's Libya, 
all right? And so we was already in those places. So when our, our country fell, we went to Cyrene. We went to Egypt. We went, as though it were, to Ethiopia. We went north, okay? And so we was already there. You say, Pastor, well, why didn't we stay north? Because of persecution. Because of persecution. And I'm kind of going a little bit off. I'm moving more into the prophetic. But you need to understand that the Hebrews, being under the curse of Yah, hey God, you could run from God, but you can't hide from him. All right? And God is always going to get what he wants out of you. All right? And so we was running, and we was doing us, and I'm going to show you in a little while, we was really, really blessed, but we were still in wrong relationship with the Most High. Why would you say that, Pastor? Because we had not altogether accepted the new covenant. We're still under the law, and when you're under the law, since you can't fulfill the law, you're under what? The curse of the law according to Deuteronomy 28. And he told him in Deuteronomy 28 that the curse would be a sign. That this thing would chase them wherever they went. It didn't matter that they was out of Israel. It didn't matter that they had left Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. That's not what God wanted. God wanted them to submit and accept him and his way of salvation. And so when we moved to North Africa, persecution started. Now, persecution started from two ways. The first way persecution started is it started from the Africans, the Hamites, all right? The Africans didn't like the Hebrews. They never did. And a lot of you, if you understand, amen, those of Hamitic descent and the true Africans, they still don't like the official Hebrews of America and even those that's out there to this day. A lot of the atrocities and the wars that's going on, civil wars that we read about, that we hear only little blips about in America, we don't know what's going on. Just look like a bunch of Africans killing each other. But when you look deeper into it, you will find remnants of our people still there being attacked by the Hamitic people of, uh, of uh, the descendants of Ham. All right? We got an email, Minister Phil can uh, attest to this, of some of the tribes of the Hebrews still in Africa reaching out to us in America, reaching out to Pastor Omar in Philadelphia Christian Church, talking about the Biafra Wars. And Minister Phil, you remember that email, Minister Phil? Yes, sir. And so they reaching out to us because they know that we are, amen, their people. We have the same bloodline. We have the same history. They reaching out to us for help. They reaching out to us to speak on their behalf, to say that there's genocide going on. And I'm going to talk about the people groups, amen, because a lot of the times the devil is trying to kill off our people, kill off our name because he don't want us to find our history. He don't want us to find our history. And so when you see them wars going on in Africa, you need to ask yourself, who are the parties that's fighting? And are any of these parties related to my people? And if you hadn't taken a DNA test, you better take your one. Because if you go to Ancestry.com, get your DNA, they will trace it back to these people groups that's still in Africa to this day. And I'm going to go over them here in a second. But these people groups can trace their history all the way back to Israel. All the way back. All the way back. All the way back. See, you listen and it's your first time and you don't know. But I want to tell you who the people are. We the people. You see? You see? And so we look at the maps to see our diaspora when we left, amen, our home. There was an article written by an American Israeli George Lichblaw, uh, he put it in the magazine, uh, newspaper, the Kulanu. And in this publication, spring of 1995, this is what he wrote. 
Amen. And this is new information for some. He wrote, press on the sweeping regional conflicts. Brent, I, I have it so that they can see it on, a, on another uh, slide. Here you go. Press on the sweeping regional conflicts. Jews, all right, that's us, the Hebrews, settled as traitors, warriors, watch this, where? In Yemen, which is East Africa, the Horn of Africa, all right, which is also East Africa, watch this, Egypt, we had a large population in Egypt. Our population in Egypt was so large that they built us a temple to mimic the temple in Jerusalem. Onias, O-N-I-A-S, built a temple for the Hebrews, a God, in Egypt because we had a so large a population that served a God, the Ptolemaic uh, 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 kingdom in Egypt. We was all in Egypt, man, all in Egypt. In fact, when you look at Cleopatra records, the Hebrews was her right and left hand, her commanders. They, they ran her armies. They were her generals. All right. We had a large population in Egypt. And so when the diaspora happened, guess where the Hebrews went? They went the same place Mary and Joseph went to hire Jesus. They went to Egypt. They went to Egypt. All right. They went to the kingdom of Cush. All right. That's Ethiopia and Nubia, North Africa, Punic settlements. That's Carthage. Uh, we talked about Carthage being uh, uh, the city founded by the Phoenicians. The area founded by the Phoenicians ran by people like Hannibal who fought Rome. That's Northern Africa. We went there. And look, this is an Israeli Ashkenazi writing in a paper, spring 1995, not disputing the facts that the people of God went to Africa. They went to Africa. And he says, an area is now covered by Maritania, which is west. He says more migrants followed these early Jewish or Hebrew settlers to northern Africa. He continues, watch this. The Jewish Hebrew presence in Africa began to expand significantly in the second and third centuries of the Christian era, extending not only into the Sahara Desert, but also reaching down along the west African coast. Now, Brent, if you can put that map up, it's a colorful map of Africa, all right? Um, yeah, that'll do, all right? Um, go back to that first one that you had. It had some, that's the one. You see us in the north up here? But right under that north part is a desert called the Sahara Desert, okay? And nobody could live in that. And so when we were under persecution, we settled just south of the Sahara Desert, which is the Niger Valley area that you would call West Africa. You see? Brent, you can go back to that original map that you had of us settling. But we not only settled in West Africa, I'm going to show you that we moved to Central Africa, which is the Congo, Hey God, and there is bloodline of the Hebrews even in South Africa, okay? Just moving, just moving. When they persecute you in one city, what you do? You flee to the next. We just kept moving. We just kept moving, trying to find a place. Now, watch this. I love this. When you go back to, to Lichblaw, what he says, he says that pressured on the sweeping regional conflicts, the Hebrews sweat, settled as what? as traitors, okay, traitors. What you need to know is that our people, when we left Israel, we was about our business. We was about our business. You got to understand, the Hebrews were some of the most educated people on the face of the earth. The most civilized, building cities, having running water, sewer system. You got to understand, listen, man, these are the people of the most high. If you want to look for a God, an example of Wakanda, Black Panther, advanced civilized society, that's Israel in the days, a God, of our diaspora. And so you got this advanced civilization going into Africa, which is not as advanced as the Hebrews. 
We could read. We could write. You got Josephus, a general, writing uh, the histories and the antiquities of our people. Listen, so we go there, all right, to Africa. Well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen when you got an educated, advanced, civilized people that begin to move into Africa? Well, they begin to make money. They begin to capitalize, a God, on the void that's there. And the Europeans are expanding. Watch this. The Europeans are expanding. And they need a people to be a go-between between the Africans and them. And it was the Hebrews. Because the Hebrews were bilingual, multilingual. They could speak different languages. They looked like the Africans so they can treat with the Africans. All right? But they were intelligent, well-educated, so they could deal with the Europeans as well. And so we started trading, man. You know what I'm saying. Buy it on the low, sell it on the high. That's what the Hebrews was doing, and we've been doing that. And in the street, they still doing it to this day. But we done forgot our anointing. We done forgot who we are. We done forgot, hey, God, the, the, the business element of our history. We done forgot it. But in these last days, watch this, ministers, watch this. We getting it all back. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, we getting it all back. In the name of Yahshua. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, hey God, here in a second. But we were traders and warriors. Huh? Look at that. Look at that. Huh? Warriors. Hey God. Now, I want to continue, hey God, going back uh, to, to, to George Lichblau, uh the one that starts in possibly, Brent, it says in possibly also to some Bantu tribes in southern Africa where 40,000 members of the Limba tribe still claim Hebrew or Jewish roots. And we'll talk about the Limba here in a little while. The names of the old Hebrew communities south of the Atlas Mountains, many of which existed well into the Renaissance times, can be found in documents in synagogue archives in Cairo. Not only were we in Africa, but when they opened up the synagogues in Cairo, Egypt, the names, a God, of the communities that were settled all across Africa was documented and recorded in those synagogues as a safe haven. So that whenever we would come back and look where our people are, the records in Cairo show the Limba, the Ashanti, the, the Yoruba, the hey God, the Ibu. The, they, they showed all those communities. Listen to me good. This talk about us leaving Israel and going to Africa, this is not a legend. This is historical fact. And this Ashkenazi right here, white complexion, Ashkenazi, he writing it and he believe it in this article and you can't even believe your own history while another race preach your history to you. You see? Look what it says. He says here, in addition, there are plenty of Jewish, Arab, and Christian accounts that cite the existence of Hebrew rulers of certain tribal groups and clans identifying themselves as Hebrews scattered throughout Mauritania, Senegal, Western Sudan, Nigeria, and Ghana. Now, I'm going to put some names down, and if you get a chance, I want you to research these names. In accordance to our history, look up Leon Africanus. And Al Adressi, he does a tremendous job talking about the Hebrews that was in Africa. You got to look up Ibn Khaldun as well, Agon. And you'll see all of these people talking about when they went to Africa, the surprise that they had when they met somebody who spoke Hebrew, had the Hebrew customs, practiced the circumcision, practiced the dietary laws, kept a seventh-day Sabbath. It got, they was doing all of that. And them boys in Africa saying, why are you clothed like that? Why are you dressed? And why are you practicing this? And why are you washing your hands? And these people tell them, man, I'm, I'm Hebrew. I'm Hebrew. You see? And these people are surprised. And 
That list of names represents Arab historians, European historians, a God, hallelujah, and Muslim historians as well. And Josephus corroborates all of this in his, in his works, that the Hebrews did go into Cyrene, they did go into Africa, Agon, uh, just like we are telling you. Now, Edith Bruder, all right, this is somebody that's not your race as well, all right? She wrote a book called The Black Jews of Africa, History, Identity, and Religion, all right? They did a film on her book in 2016, a French uh, uh, Jewish filmmaker, Lauren Gavrin, all right? And this, this is the white Ashkenazi Jews. She made a film based uh, uh, with, with that girl, Edith Bruder, book in it. And, and they say this, in sub-Saharan Africa, you can find Judaic tribes. Where are they? They are in Ghana, Nigeria, Mali, Uganda, Cameroon, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and even Seatom and other countries, or Seatome. I don't know how you would pronounce that. You see what I'm saying? My African uh, pronunciations are not as they should be. But what you need to know about that last one, Seatome, man, the history of that little island of the coast of West Africa is just a little small island of the west coast of South Africa. The history is amazing. When you get your book, Agon, from Babylon to Timbuktu, and even if you read the whole article of uh, uh, the George guy and the, uh, that I just quoted, he's going to tell you about how the Hebrews were so advanced in trade in money, in riches, that they literally took over Spain and Portugal. The Spanish and the Portuguese call it, they call them the Moors, or they call them the Berbers. And you'll, 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 you'll see plays about, hey God, uh, 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 I forget the play name, oh God, Shakespeare, with, with the black guy, and Othello, you'll see plays about uh, located in Spain and, and with, with the black guy and it's Othello and, 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 and they rich and, they, and, he, and he got, you know, the Spanish laid and all that. And you're like, well, where do these black people come from? These Africans? Nah, them Hebrews, them Hebrews. And some of them got crossed up and converted to, to Islam, but the Hebrews was running Spain and they was running Portugal, but the Spanish king come down, and you could read about it in your history, and said that, I don't want no Hebrews in Spain. Y'all going to have to convert to Christianity and be baptized in the Catholic Church. And them Hebrews are like, we ain't going for that. All right? And so they left Spain, and they went to Portugal. And what happened? They began to run Portugal again. All right? Now, while they run in Portugal, the Portuguese, hey, God, they do the same thing. We don't want y'all here. We got, we gonna go. Y'all going to have to go. Well, they take a, 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 I don't know if it was like a thousand or two thousand of the Hebrew children. And they sent them to a little island. The little island called uh, Seo Tome. No, the ones that right here, the one that Seo Tome or Seo Tome. That little island, the history is Hebrew. It's Hebrew. The Portuguese sent the children, the Hebrew children, over there. Because the Hebrews said, we're not being baptized in no Catholic church. We, and, and that should be our motto today still. We're not being baptized in no Catholic church. We're going to accept Yahshua. <laughs> and we're going to be saved. <laughs> you see? But not that form of Christianity. But, but, but anyway, that, that, that island on the west is, is filled with our history. And, and, and you see, God leave little breadcrumbs for us. Ministers and deacons, they, he leave little breadcrumbs for us just in case that we would wake up and be hungry to know who we are. And once you get one breadcrumb, it's like you can't stop. <laughs> and 
and you find out about this group and about that group and about this group and what was going on in Africa and they all lead to one another until you figure out that we really are those people. Now, I want to talk with you right quick, hey God, about the different groups that's still in existence. Because a lot of people say, well, pastor, if the Hebrews were in Africa, where are they now? They two places. <laughs> One, they still in Africa. Two, they here in America. Taking the identity of the so-called African Americans. All right? All right? See here? You say, Pastor, how can you say that? Because <laughs> that's where they took us from. Let me take my time. Let me take my time. Pastor, how we know the, the Hebrews was in Africa? Well, they still in Africa. The first group I'm going to talk about are the Falasha Jews. The Falasha. All right? They still there. Marcus to this day. They still out there. All right? They in Ethiopia. The name is Better Israel. They still out there. And uh, in the early 1900s, they wrote a letter to the Israelis because once again, they was in persecution. You could just stop right there, Brent. See how they look like us? They was in persecution. The Ethiopians was persecuting them and other people and other African nations was persecuting them. So they wrote a letter to Israelis and they said, look, y'all going to have to take us in. We want to come back to our homeland. We honoring the laws and everything like that. And these Africans persecuting, there's wars going on. Hey, man, let us in. Now, if you the Israelis and a group of black people say we ready to come home, back to our land, and we are the Jews too. Now, if they're not the Jews, would you let them back? No way. Be like, boy, you ain't no Jew. You ain't no Jew, but how, how am I going to let you back? You ain't no Jew. That'd be like us getting in the bus, and we say only black people can get in the bus. <laughs> and a bunch of other races come up to the bus and say, I'm black, I'm black, let me in. We laugh at them, but boy, you ain't black. Well, Israelis was calling for all the Ashkenazi Jews to come back home. They gave them all what was called the right of return. The Falashi say, we come from that. We have a right to return to. Guess what the Israeli government did? Let them back in. Ooh. They let them return, Marcus. They let them return. The Falashi Jews, they were given the right of return, and they was taking them. And in 1971, the prime minister of Israel made the right of return legitimate, legal, law, that if you Falasha, you can come back. All right? All right? Brent, what else? What other pictures you got? All right? That's them right there. That they live in Israel now. They got about 148,000 of them in Israel. 148,000. Now, you got to understand they are our people. So the same things we've gone through in America... They going through in Israel right now. Police brutality. They marching against racism. You know? They having problems, a God, with, with, with segregation and discrimination. You see? There was a big outpouring of, 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 uh, of anger towards the Ashkenazi Israeli government because what they found was, was that as these Falashi Hebrews was coming back, they was putting the women on birth control to try to keep their population down. You see? Because as the blessings return to our people, hey God, we're going to begin to produce more. And as the curses fall upon other people, they're going to begin to produce less. And the meek shall inherit the earth. You see? But they was putting the falashes on birth control, deacon. And they didn't even know. They were just giving them that as they was coming in until it was exposed. What you trying to population control us for? Same way they trying to population control us to this day right here. 
making every single one of our young women, whether they're healthy or not, oh, you got to get a cesarean. Get a cesarean. Ain't nothing wrong with that young girl. But if you put a, make her get a cesarean, hey God, you know that nine times out of ten, she's going to only go through that procedure more, probably three times, maybe four times, but it limits the amount of children you can have if you're letting them cut you open and do all that. Not only that, you put abortion clinics in our neighborhood. Huh? And you push that abortion agenda. You see? You see, Egypt don't change its strategy, no. Kill the children. Kill the children. As they become more in number than us. Because they are mightier than us. But besides the Falasha, they still there. You say, Pastor, I don't believe that the Hebrews were in Africa. Look at them to this day. You can go visit them right now. They're still in Africa. The Falasha. And moving to Israel as we speak, they in Africa and Israel. Israel making them serve in the military. We're going to give you the right of return, but you got to serve in the Israeli military. And that's one of our brothers there. Hey, God. Oh, yeah. That's your people, Israel. You see? Let me give you the next group, the Limba, the Limba tribe, all right? He said, Pastor, I know that you're telling me the truth that, that the Hebrews were in Africa. They're still in Africa. The Limba tribe is still in Africa. This is a Bantu people. They're native to Zimbabwe and South Africa. Some of them in Mozambique, smaller branches. Huh? And uh, Malawi. I think is how you pronounce that. I got some pics right here of the Limba. Hey, God. They stumbled upon the Limba tribe and saw them people blowing shafars and, and, and practicing all the Hebrew laws, and they said, well, what in the world is going on? All right? And so uh, people in the West began to say, oh, no, we're going to prove this right or wrong. So they gave the Limbas a DNA test. They said, we're going to see if they really whatever. When they gave the Limba the DNA test, the Limba DNA come back not only Hebrew, but how you pronounce it? Kohanite, Kohanan. I, I can't say it, but I'm going to explain it like this. It not only came back Hebrew, but a particular tribe of the Hebrew that's related to the Levites who carried the ark and worshiped the most high God and took care of the temple. All right? That's how the limbo come back. You know? Now the DNA is a little bit confusing because when they test the falasha, they didn't, they didn't come back all connected like that, but they still let the falasha in because of their history. You know? The limbo. <laughs> all right? The next group I'm going to talk about is the Ibu. The Ibu people, all right? Those are the people that's in West Africa, primarily in Nigeria. Those are the ones, a God, that had contacted the church about the genocide that's going on in Africa because they're killing a lot of Ibus right now. But you see, these American presidents don't care about black blood that's spilled. They care about life. Hallelujah, when they say all lives matter, don't believe that. They should say some lives matter. Because when you got wars going on in Africa, hey God, they're not quick to go stop that genocide down there. But let genocide happen, hey God, in Iraq or Iran, where that all that, they're going to run over there. Yeah. Yeah. And so to this day right now, Ibo, Ibus are losing their lives. Losing their lives to this day. Hey God. And people don't know about it, and America ain't doing nothing about it. You see? I wish we had a Hebrew president of America. Then we would protect all people, especially our people. And we wouldn't just be fighting for certain peoples that got all on their property, but we would stop genocide everywhere, especially if you touch the Hebrew. But the Ibu tribe, you see? Now, a lot of blacks in America, 
their DNA come back. When they take the test, their DNA come back. Descendants of Ibu people. T.D. Jakes, DNA test, come back. Ibu. You see? This Ibu tribe are Hebrews. And there's a little bit of a word play right here because the Hebrew word uh, 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 is, is very similar to Ibu. Remember uh, when we studied a God going back to, to the Old Testament where we talked about where Hebrew came from, Eber, all right? And Eber, moving down, you could see it being Eber, Ibu. That's, that's, that's just one letter. That's, that's, that's one letter off. And so a lot of them say that that Ibu is really Hebrew. You see? Not only that, we had a bombshell when we were studying this the first time. When we found an Ibu by the name of Olauda Equiano. <laughs> That's our dog, Gandelli. Elauda Equiano. This brother was a slave, Mark. And he was a slave and wind up being so good at, 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 at uh, you know, uh, being a Navy shipman that he bought his own freedom. You know what I'm saying? Rose up the ranks on the sea and, and bought his own freedom. And, and he began to write books about his life and about slavery. Olauda Equiana. And he, he became an abolitionist in Europe where he was trying to get them to stop slavery. You see? So Olauda put everything he had about his life in a book. Okay? Talking about how they raided his village and came and stole him away and he was separated from his sister and, and, and you know, they put him in slavery. And he talks about all that. Well, one day they give Olauda a Bible <laughs> and they let him read the book. And so he reading this Bible, especially in the Old Testament, and he look and he say, well, that sounds just like the things that my people do. The whole circumcision, the whole Sabbath rest, the whole washings and cleanings, the whole burial outside of our city, the whole clean and unclean, the whole dietary law, what you can eat, what you can't eat. He said, hold on, hold on. These Ebus sound like my people. And Olauda, he awakened the world, man, that the Hebrews were not a God running around Europe <laughs> with light complexions, but that the Hebrews was in Africa, in the diaspora, and the Ebus and Olauda and his book, his biography and everything began to prove that that all came into context. And then after the Ebus, you got the Ashante people, all right? The Ashante people. These are the people that are in Ghana, West Africa. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that first lady DNA test come back Ashanti. You see? And this people, this Ashanti people, Agon, after we preached that message about the Ashanti, they contacted the church, sent me emails, and showed me pictures of the particular compound to this day, Agon, in West Africa. And when you look at the royal uh, 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 pictures and seals of the Ashante compound, they still to this day have the manure as part of their art to describe their nation. That candlestick. These be the people, man. And you could spell it with that E or you could put an I on there. They got the Ashante people in Ghana. Go ahead, Brent, show us some pictures. Hey, God, the Ashanti people, the, the Hebrews of West Africa. Come on, Brent, keep going. Hey, God, look at that bling on that boy. You see that? Let me tell you something, boy. That's our people. Brother still love gold to this day, boy, I'm telling you. Now, if you stop right there, when the Europeans first met the Ashanti people, they were surprised. 
because the, the leader came out and he had a big plate upon his chest. And the plate had 12 stones on it. And the Europeans were surprised because they remember reading in the Hebrew Bible how the Hebrew high priest wore a breastplate with the stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. And they wore that breastplate because with it, they could receive revelation from the Most High. The breastplate and the Urim and the Thummim thum was the ways in which the Most High communicated with his people, especially in the Old Covenant. And so when the Ashanti leader came out and he had that breastplate on him, they drew it. They took a they took, they drew it. They said, how, how curious is this? That these people could be in Africa and never heard of a Bible and never heard of all of these things that, that the European Jews got going on. But he coming out with, as though it were, the breastplate of the high priest of the Old Testament. The Ashanti people. You see? But there's so many many to talk about now I want to show you some maps here for a second the place where we wind up settling at because of persecution them coming down and pushing us down we settled in a place called Negro land somebody say Negro land and Guinea as well now the thing about Negro land is that I never was taught in school about a Negro land. You see? I was taught about Ireland <laughs> and all their lands, but, but not Negro land. You see? And you're not taught about Negro land because they don't want to tell you, hey God, where you come from. And they don't want to tell you where you come from because if you can get to Negro land, you'll eventually get to Israel. Because you're going to find out as you look close at Negro land that the people who lived in Negro land were not Africans. They were not Africans. They were not Africans as well. And, and, and I've showed you that, a God, in the, in, in the, in the Bible encyclopedias, a God, that that, that the historians say that the Negroes and the Hamites were two different people. We get to America and they don't call us Africans. What they called us, Brother Sam? Negroes. And for the longest on our birth certificate, hey God, before it was black, before it was African American, guess what was on our birth certificates? Negroes. You see? And they called us Negroes because they took us from Negro land. <laughs> and they say, Lord, unless they find out about Negro land, let's change it. We're going to call them black. And then we're going to call them African American. You know? But as you look close to the, at the maps in Negro land and Guinea, and you got you to gotta do your research. You got to get yourself some maps. You got you to gotta go deep into it. Brent, let's flip through. Hey, God, we got some maps for you. Hey, God, when you get close to Guinea, especially where Ghana was, the old maps used to say what we used to call our land. If you look close at that, you'll see what the people of Negro land in Guinea called this particular region. They called it the kingdom that K right at, the kingdom of what? Of Judah. All right? That's what we called ourselves. Isn't it ironic that this same kingdom of Judah, that's what we called it, the white folk called it the slave coast. That's where they would get the slaves from. Now, to this day, they'll never put the kingdom of Judah there. They began to change it. You see it under it, wider, and then they put an O-I on it, O-U-I, O-U-D-A. They just didn't want to say Judah. So they was playing word games and word play 
and moving letters out. Amen. Just so that we wouldn't figure it out. And then they told their people not to tell us how to read. And we'll, we'll get to it in a second. But when you look at the slave ship logs, our names were representative, a God, of the Hebrews. <laughs> and I'm going to show you next time as we move down, all, of, all the names were Yah this and such and such Yah and this Yah and all that. And so when you see the movie of Roots, they whipping Toby. And they're telling Toby, they're changing Toby's name. Now, why are you changing Toby's name? You're changing Toby's name because you don't want Toby to understand where he come from. Because his name is not African. His name is Hebrew. His name is not Kunta. His name is Jeremiah. Ooh, y'all ain't ready for this. And so they whip him, change his name, tell him, Tell the slave master, don't teach him how to read. And then they do all this maneuvering on our maps. The kingdom of Judah. Brent, what else you got for me? On these maps, you'll see particular wording where it talks about a God, the Hebrews in Africa. This is Africa right here. And it says here on the map that this land, a God, was populated by the Jews. You'll see it here on the left. Huh? And you'll see right here that the same land that was populated by the Jews, right there you can get the gold and slaves. All right? I'm going to talk about this probably next time as we talk about the slave trade and we bring Edom into it. Because you got to know that when we leave God, the promise was the older going to serve the younger. But when we leave God, the younger will be enslaved to the elder. All right. And that's exactly what happened. So Edom is going to come play, play a major part in our next sermon. Now, some people say, J. Malvo, they say, well, weren't all Africans made slaves? No. Nah. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't. When the Europeans came through, they didn't want Africans. They wanted Hebrews. They wanted Negroes. You say, why? Well, we built different than the Africans. <laughs> and we came in with a level of intellect and of building and of know-how. And that's the ones you wanted to build America. You didn't want a people who couldn't build something for themselves out in Africa still living in, in huts. You wanted a people with a history of masonry and carpentry and trade and understanding to come and build one of the greatest nations on the earth, America. They didn't want regular Africa. It couldn't even sub subdue them, amigo. But we were subdued because we, was, we knew that we was under a curse. You can go back to the slave boats. Some of the slaves were saying, we understand that this is the judgment of our God upon us. And some of them went willingly because they knew they was in disobedience to the Most High. They knew Deuteronomy 28. You see? Our people. Brent, what else you got for me, Brent? Shankala. This is towards the east right here. This is, the, this is probably where the Falasha come from. You'll see it. They have a little square. It says the exiled Hebrews found in Shankala, 1747. What in the world are they doing in Africa? <laughs> you see? Brent, what else you got for me? You got anything else? The Atlantic slave trade. You see, because our trek, our move from Israel and the diaspora to northern Africa, all the way to west and southern, it didn't stop there. Something else happened. A hey God, the Atlantic slave trade. And so next time we come, we're going to get off into that Atlantic slave trade 
and we're going to go in, all right, and talk about how we got to the Americas. And I'm not just saying America because we got a bunch of Hebrews that's in Brazil and in South America, and they're not woke yet. And First Lady doing her best to, hey, God, put the messages in Portuguese and, 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 and Spanish, hey, God. And if you can help with that project, help, because we need to get the word out to them as well. That's our brothers and sisters down there, all right? Look just like us, all right? And oppress just like us. Maybe even worse. Police brutality, all of that. All right? But our time is here. And the time is now. And we got to rouse the sleeping giant. The, we got to rouse the, the sleeping lion. You see? Now, before I go, I just want to reiterate that there was great hate for our people. Great hate. It was just like Joseph in his coat of many colors when he was amongst his brethren. His industrial nature, his administration, his favor, amen, brought him in contempt in the sight of his brothers. And that's what happened to us in Africa. As the Hebrews, a God, was bawling out of control. All right? Making money hand over fist. The Africans didn't like it. And to this day, that resentment still resides in some of the African people, hence the wars that we have going on, slaughtering and committing genocide to a lot of our African, a lot of our Hebrew relatives that's still in Africa. All right? I bring this up because in America, we've lost something. We've lost that drive. We've lost that industry. We've lost that, that entrepreneurial zeal that we had when we left Israel. You see? In America, we want to either work for somebody or, or we want to, we wanna, hey, God, sit home and, and, and collect a check. And, and I want to tell you, Israel, that that time has to be over. We got to get back on our grind. We got to be who we always were meant to be, the head and not the tail, the lenders and not the borrowers. What you're telling us, Pastor, get on your hustle. Get on your hustle. You mean legal or illegal, Pastor? Legal. You ain't got to sell no drugs to be blessed. Blessed is not what you are, it's who you are. The favor is on you. I was talking to a dear brother who just come out of jail and, 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 and I, I've been knowing a brother, love him to pieces, know him good. And he telling me the struggle, Pastor, I'm trying to keep it real. I'm trying to do right, but I'm, I'm doing this and it ain't making that much money. And I know what I could wind up making over here, but I told him, I told him, just the other day, I told him, I said, brother, you ain't got to go back to that. Don't you see that everything your hands touch is blessed? I don't care if you, if, you, if, you, if you cook a roux, a gravy in a pot. I don't care if you do somebody's hat, you do their nails. I don't care if you paint a house. I don't care if you play on an instrument. I don't care if you're singing a mic. I don't care if you're writing a book. Every, I don't care if you shoot a ball, if you run, a, run, run on a track. Everything your hands or feet or mind touch is blessed, Hebrew. You ain't got to sell no dope. You ain't got to sell no drugs. All the enemy is doing is using your blessing to promote his agenda. You got to cross over. You got to cross over and begin to do it for God. Get on your hustle. Get on your hustle. And I'm riding in my truck the other day and I'm just chilling and I'm listening to Christian rap and I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling. I'm just cooling out, making my stops to different locations and doing what I normally do. And as I'm listening to music, Carlos, this is what I heard. I said, man, I said, them Hebrews rapping, and they rapping a lot about sports. That's what I said. Now, you got to understand, I love sports. I love to run, jump, shoot a ball. I love to do it all. All right? 
See, but PMG, listen to me for a second. Our music has always moved us. There's power in the music. And whatever our music talking about, that's what we talking about. You don't know how much power you got. And since the days where our music talked about drugs and drug dealing, what do our people do? Drugs and drug dealing. When the music talked about going to the club and getting a bunch of women and getting drunk, what do our people do? Go to the club, get a bunch of women, get drunk. And since the music is talking about sports and shooting and running and jumping, what do our people want to do? Shoot, run, and jump. And I'm not saying that that's bad because some of y'all, that's going to be your calling. That's where your anointing is. Nobody can do it like you. You're going to be a millionaire, a billionaire, and you're going to bless the people of y'all. And I praise God for you. Oh, yeah, I'm not discounting that. No. All I'm saying is I'm casting vision right now. We need a music that's not just about one thing. We need a music that's about another thing right now. Sure, you can get them hype, hit the, hit, 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 hit the shot at the, at the buzzer. Touchdown. Yeah, shake them, stiff arm. I understand that. Get them hype with that. Hit a home run. Get them hype with that. But let me cast vision. All musicians, listen to me good. This is what our people need right now. They need some grind music. They need some hustle music. They need some work hard music. Not just in the area of athletics, but in the area of business. They need some music that tell them to start something, invest something, buy something, build something, get you a franchise, get you this, get you that. We need music that'll get the Hebrews back to where we was, man. Get some real estate, flip some houses. Go to that bank with a business plan. Do business with your people. Start off small, grind. Huh? Make $20 one day, but be happy. Uh, never despise meager beginnings. Hey, God, got me an employee, one employee. We both struggling, but listen, I got me somebody to help me. Oh, God, five years later, got me three employees now. The vision is gone. Ten years later, ooh, I'm going state to state now. Oh, God, 15 years later, it's international, baby. I'm on a jet catching somewhere to Africa. Can we rap? Can we sing about some things our people need to hear right now? Ooh. But you say, Pastor, I'm a musician, but I, I don't know about business like that. Listen to me. Most of the rappers didn't know about the streets like that. They was rap thinking, you know, they was rapping somebody else's life. And though you know business like that or not, maybe you need to sit down with somebody that do business. Maybe you need to read somebody's biography that do business. And you get in that moment and you get in character and you write about that. And teach our children. Teach our children. Because that's who we was. We ran Africa, man. We left Jerusalem not even under the blessing, and we ran Africa, man. How much more could we run where we at now since we got the blessing of the Most High? Get in that booth. Give me that grind music. You see? See, our people satisfied with one stream of income. <laughs> That's how you just going to say that and turn around on me. I'm, just, I'm telling you. They satisfy with one stream of income. Nothing wrong with working a job. No, not, nothing is wrong with working a job. But when that one job becomes your only stream of income, you're in a dangerous place. You're in a dangerous place. Come on, Carlos, teach him something, man. You always got to have multiple streams of income. And even as a business owner, don't you put all your eggs in one basket with one business. Why? Because seasons change, and that chicken might not be, in lay, be able to lay eggs no more. But I got this cow over here that's got me some milk. And when the eggs not happening, the milk is happening, and baby's still eating. Anybody hear me up in here? Get back to it, Hebrews. I'm about to go, but I just can't stop now. 
Start something. Pastor, I'm going to quit my job tomorrow. Don't you dare quit your job. Start something. I got three questions for you. What's your passion? Whatever your passion is, that's where you're going to find your anointing. Whatever your passion is, whether you know it or not, is going to make some money. Pastor, I don't do nothing but bake these cookies. Famous Amos. What's your passion, man? What's your passion? Whatever your passion is, people are going to pay you for it. I don't care if it's just you getting on YouTube and singing some covers for YouTube. People are going to pay you for it. They got people with millions of views getting checks every month from YouTube for doing their passion. I tell our people all the time, the ones that can cook, I say, man, do your YouTube videos, man. Just get on there and cook something, man. Just cook something, especially we in Louisiana, man. Cook something, man. Sing something. Play something. Just do something. If you don't do nothing, he can't bless it. You go into the other man's job, and that's all right. And he blessing the other man's job because you that. But it came a point where Jacob said, he said, I can't stay here under Laban. I got to get my own stuff. I've been blessing Laban too long. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a season for all of that. But you want to work towards getting your own stuff. You see? You want to work towards getting your own stuff. You see? I'm saying too much. But my heart, perfect time in Hebrew, perfect time. My heart is for you to get back to where we was. They ran Spain. They ran Portugal. They ran Northern Africa. When I say they, I mean we. They were traders, y'all. Buying on the low. And selling on the high. What's your passion? Second question I have for you, what you good at? Because sometimes what you're good at, you don't even like to do it, but guess what? It's going to make you some money. <laughs> Got some people that wash cars, boy, but they look, they sure don't like to wash no car, but look, you good at it. Baby, make you some money. Now, Hebrews, I'm bringing you to another level right here. And I'm about to go. When you find what you're good at, you teach it to others around you. You let them do it, and now you can go and start something else. I'm good at it. I can teach it, and I can start something else. I'm good at it. I can teach it. And I can start something else. We want to be in one place too long. <laughs> we want to be in one place too long. That's why they say never teach them business. Because the moment they teach us business, the millionaire's anointing is coming your way. And right now, through independent operation, we have Hebrew women, first lady showing me, they're coming out of the projects. They're coming out of the hood with million-dollar businesses. Why? Because they special? Nah. They just decided to do something. And the most high blessed them. What's your passion? What you're good at? Here's the last one. Is there a need around me? Because sometimes you don't have a passion. I'm not really excited about anything. Secondly, you say, I'm not really good at too much. <laughs> but I see this need right here. They don't have this type of business in this area, and people really need to get this right here. And nobody else is doing it like this. There's a need. The millionaire that supported Martin Luther King Gatson 
from, from Georgia, had the hotels and everything. That was his claim to fame. He said, I see a need and I feel it. I don't even have to know about it, but I'm going to go learn about it. I'm going to become an expert at it. I don't really have a passion about it. I don't have a passion at all about it, but I see a need, I feel it, and I make a million dollars off of it. It's hot, and there's nobody selling air conditions. I'm about to go, but I'm speaking to you from my heart. It's time to grind. Time to get paid. It's time to work. It's time to be Israel. And the same ones that's gonna come tell you with all this uh, uh, super spiritual stuff, and they ain't spiritual at all. Super spiritual stuff. Oh, money don't matter. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. That's why you can't stop abortion in your country. That's why you can't stop the police brutality. Because you, you ain't got no voice and you ain't got no power because you ain't got no money like that. But let us 10 years from now have the Fortune 500 companies. Let us 10 years from now own the tele-networking industry. Let us 10 years from now own more banks than we own. Let us, let us have those things and let somebody touch our people. It's your season, Hebrews. <laughs> it's your season, baby. I'm about to go, I'm about to go, I'm about to get out of here. But can you discern when it's your season? I speak it on you. I prophesy it on you. Hey, God, as the music pray, we gonna, we play, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray with you, and then we're going to worship, and I'm going to get out your way. I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Father, I know it's my season. And I thank you that to everything, there's a time and a season. Right now, I accept my season. And I need you to show me my passion, what I'm good at. <laughs> show me the needs that I can feel that's around me. <laughs> I'm ready for my season. I understand that I'm not perfect. But I believe that Yahshua Jesus died for all my sins and imperfections. I believe he was buried and he rose the third day. Now, Lord, save me, forgive me, and heal me. Take the curse off of me so that I can reap what I have sown. I want a hundredfold for every seed I've put in the ground. Give me wisdom to have multiple streams of income at every time. Bless me, Daddy. In Yahshua Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on. Come on, somebody. This is my seed. Grace. For grace. Woo. For favor. Come on, somebody. This is my season. To reap what I have. So. Come on, sing it out. This is. This is my seed. For grace. For favor. Yes, it is. This is my season to reap, to reap what I have. So one more time. This is, this is my season for grace, for grace.
grace, for favor. It's my season to reap, to reap what I have. Everything is working. bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the most high be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you. Bless you with shalom. Bless you with peace. Bless you with prosperity. Bless you with health in your body. Right now receive it. It's your season. Be blessed with the ironic blessing. Be blessed Israel. I speak it over you again. Thrive where you are planted. Be blessed. In Yahshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. Be blessed. Everything is working together for my
together, together is working. It's working together, together is working. It's working together, together is working. 